Okay. All right, volume this. Volume this. Okay, boys. Volume. Let's check the volume. All right. Good morning, everybody. And uh, the MSET phase one seat allocation has been done. All of you would have got the results. You would have checked up the results by this time. So uh, two trends have played out. One is that people would have applied uh, or given their options in phase one based on last year's phase two uh, ranks. And uh, therefore, there would be a slight disappointment with respect to what uh, seat they have obtained this time. That is one. And two is that there was an unprecedented demand for CS and IT courses this year. And therefore, the ranks have moved up a little bit. Because of these two reasons, you won't have got the seat that you desired. So therefore, consequently, there is a lot of interest in phase two counseling. And I've been getting a lot of uh, calls regarding phase two. So I will spend a couple of minutes in terms of clarifying both of these things. And if there are any questions, uh, you can put it in the comment section so that we can answer uh, those questions. Sir. So first, there are a few things with regard to phase one we have to finish and let us complete those things first. Sir. So what is it that you need to do as far as uh, phase one is concerned? One, download the provisional allotment letter. First download it, there's a provisional allotment letter, go to your login uh, at the MSET uh, website and uh, download the provisional allotment letter. Second, in the provisional allotment letter, there is a fee specified, pay the fees. Third, do the self-reporting. Do the self-reporting online itself, okay? Then take the admission number. So there is an admission number that will be given to you. Please note that admission number. And then take a printout. So these are the things that you need to keep in mind. But the most important thing that you need to remember is that if fees is not paid by 28th October, then the seat is cancelled. So this is what you got to keep in mind. A lot of students are asking me this question that they are not happy with phase one uh, result and uh, therefore they will go directly to phase two. If you do that without confirming phase one, there is a danger that this seat will get cancelled. So don't assume that this seat will stay for you. So what you need to do is take the seat, pay the fees, take out the provisional allotment letter, do the self-reporting, and then go to phase two. If you go to phase two without doing these things in phase one, this seat will get canceled. So there are some special circumstances where you don't bother about this. For example, there is a student who's already participated in JOSA counseling. She is likely to get some branch in some NIT may not be CSIT or may not be the top branches that she wants. So she already has a backup. So she is not happy with the result that she's got this time. So because she's got a backup, she doesn't have to go ahead with uh, this phase one and she can directly go to phase two. But if you have no other option other than MSET seats, what you need to do is ensure that you get this seat, ensure that you confirm the seat, and then move on to phase two. Without doing this, if you do, let me repeat, without doing, without confirming this, without paying the fees here, if you go to, uh, directly to phase two, there is a danger that this particular seat will be canceled. It's not a danger, it's a reality that this seat will be canceled and will be allotted to somebody else in phase two. So that is what you got to keep in mind. So once you are done with phase one, once you are done with all of these things, uh, paying fees, self-reporting, et cetera, et cetera, then you can move to phase two. And we will answer all the questions with regard to phase two. Okay, now the question regarding phase two. Who are all the people who can apply? Because there is a lot of confusion about phase two. Who can apply, who cannot apply, et cetera, et cetera. In one word, let me say that anybody who is eligible to apply for MSET seats can participate in phase two. Phase two or the final phase. This is also called the final phase. Uh, first, what are the category of students? Candidates who have secured a seat but not interested to join. Candidates who've got, who got the seat but they are not interested to join. There are some people who've got the uh, seat 
but they they don't they don't like the seat so they don't mind even if it is cancelled so they can go for phase 2 who have not secured the seat so far but got their certificates verified that means they have given some options none of those options they have got so obviously they will have to go to phase 2 then who have not excised the option so far there are some students who have got their certificates verified but who have not excised any kind of options they are also eligible to go to phase 2 and uh, who have secured seats now finally most of you will fall in this category you have secured a seat you have self reported and you are aspiring for a better option so most of you will fall into this category you have accepted a seat you paid the fees and still you want to go to phase 2 in the hope that you will get a better branch so you are also eligible to go for the final phase and any other eligible candidate there may be some candidates who have not bothered to participate who have not got gone for certificate verification in the uh, first phase so all of those people can apply in the final phase okay now <clears throat> what are the other questions that people have with regard to the final phase now this is unlike your uh, josa counseling so those those students who are used to josa counseling where you give the options first and for further rounds the same options are considered again and again in the in the case of mset this is not the case the final phase is a totally independent round so it has got nothing to do with your first phase so you have to give fresh options here that is first thing that you have to keep in mind the first phase options will not be considered at all all the first phase options will be eliminated now they will not be in the system so in the second phase they are going to consider only the fresh options that you give now so give as many options as you like so again there is no limit to the number of options you can give uh, as many options as you like starting with jntu uh, jntuh computer science if you want you can give from the beginning so do not assume anything so you will not know how many will fall vacant and uh, because what will happen is that uh, based on the options that are given by students uh, some students will move up and those seats uh, which were filled in phase 1 because some students are moving up they will fall vacant and uh, other students will be allocated in those results sir. so therefore what you do is give as many options as you like assuming that all the seats are vacant okay if you are satisfied with phase 1 do not apply in final phase that is one thing that you got to remember if you are satisfied with phase 1 you are happy say for example you've got say uh, in your desired college desired branch and you are happy with it do not apply in final phase because if you apply in final phase and uh, you get another seat your previous allotment will be cancelled and your new seat will be allotted now let me give an example a lot of students don't understand this for example now you have in the first phase you've got cvr say electronics and communication engineering so now you participate in the second round and in the second round somebody would have told you that you know cse is better than ece etc etc and you are applied to a lot of csc seats uh, and you have got say guru nanak computer science let's say you got uh, guru nanak computer science then what will happen you will be allotted guru nanak computer science and uh, the cvr electronics will be cancelled at that stage you can't go and say no 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 now i am not interested in guru nanak uh, i want to go back to cvr that is not going to happen so please remember if you participate in the second round and you get a another seat in the second round the first round seat will be cancelled so that is one thing that you got to remember so if you are happy with uh, whatever you got in the first round be happy do not go on to the second round okay so this is something that you got to keep in mind now some important dates that you need to remember as far as the second round is concerned online slot booking that means if you have not got your certificates verified then you can do a slot booking afresh on 29th you can go for certificate verification on 3010 that means if you have not done your certificate verification so far uh, then you can do that by 30th october and it won't apply to most of you because most of you have already participated in the first round so if you have participated in the first round you can directly go to the final phase and you can give the options between 3010 and 3110 3010 and 3110 so between these two dates you can give the options the allotment of seats will be done on uh, 2nd november 
and payment and reporting will be done between 2nd, no 2nd November to 5th November. 2nd November to 5th November is the payment and reporting. So these are the things that you have to consider as far as the final phase is concerned. Okay, so I hope I've answered all the uh, questions with regard to whatever you have with phase one and phase two. To summarize, in phase one, you've got to download your provisional allotment letter, you've got to pay fees, you've got to collect the admission letter. So all of these things have to be done. And self-reporting, that is what you have to do in the phase one. In phase two, you can give fresh options as if all the seats are vacant and uh, go through the motions and then you'll have to wait for your final phase results confirmation. Okay. Now, before going for the final phase seats allotment, you would obviously be interested in uh, what are the seats, uh, what are the trends in phase one. So in my next video, I will discuss the phase one trends. We will put up the next video sometime today. You will, uh, you will know what are the phase one trends. It will give you an indicator as to what you should be doing with respect to the options that you can exercise in the second round. So I will discuss this, this in my next video. All right. Okay. If there are any, if there is any other help that you need, and if there are any doubts that you have, please uh, put it in the comment section so that we can, our team can get back to you with respect to whatever doubts that you have. You can also WhatsApp or call our number 900000761. 900000761. And uh, we will come back to you with any further clarifications on this. Thank you.